Right. So the community vote will pull you and think what's going to happen. And I wouldn't be too surprised here to see, indeed, Liquid taking this one. Had to do a double take there. 89%. Yeah. Not really a surprise. Ince has been statistically not the greatest of teams so far this season, whereas Liquid has long been not just a favorite of the region, but shown signs of brilliance with this new roster, and they really need to get consistency under their belt. Keep in mind that both of these teams are also competing in the six Invitational Qualifiers, given that Latin America has two spots up for grabs. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Will it be Pain Gaming? Will it be Ince? Will it be Black Dragons? Will it be Ninjas in Pajamas? Or could it possibly even be Team Liquid here? Well, we'll find out, I'm sure. But in this match, it's definitely looking like Liquid are the favorites slotted to win. Red Devils as well. I, I knew I forgot one of the Pro League teams. <laughs> well, they put up a, they put up a heck of a fight against FaZe in the previous match, if we're being honest. like I, I think even though Red Devils didn't win the match against FaZe just now, they could be pretty proud of those five rounds they managed to take. No, I was, I, was quite, I was actually quite impressed with what we saw out of Red Devils. They said that at the conclusion of the match, and I think it still carries through right now. Yeah. But... Uh, here in Liquid versus Ince, uh, I mean, while FaZe was definitely the team that it was expected to win in uh, FaZe versus Red Devils, it came very close. And we have the potential for that same thing to happen here. Important to note that Ince, while they have been losing pretty consistently throughout this season, uh, they have been coming close to victories time after time. They've been really working at it, and it's there's potential for them to actually take a win here today. And I said smoked, and that's just more so that it's been, you know, now two matches in a row where... We haven't had the best showing for Ints. We'll see if they can put it all together as Bank provided a thrilling contest for our third matchup with FaZe coming very close to losing a match that I think the community was overwhelmingly supportive of FaZe winning and thought that they would end up taking it. Now, keep in mind that there is usually a, one of the three hard breachers banned on this map. Maverick does tend to inhabit more of a true hard breacher role. It's usually Hibana who ends up getting banned out. Liquid will immediately take Glass off of the board, and the counter ban from Ints will be Hibana. So we'll see things play out very similarly to what we saw, I would imagine, from both FaZe and Red Devils, with a Maverick being an almost must pick on every single attacking round. I have to say the Hibana ban is kind of boring. You know, it's it's typical, it's expected, you're going to have it on the bank, and it makes for a style of basement play that is just a little bit a little bit less interesting. And I think the biggest thing is that it puts pressure on teams to win their basement holds as well. It reminds me of Clubhouse before the rework, whereas you had to win that basement hold, regardless of whatever operators were in play. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, makes for, it makes for really kind of a stale basement uh, defense, and usually a pretty heavy emphasis on the typical server take from the attacking team. Not really a whole lot of option for maneuverability there. We have seen some teams actually uh, do some really interesting stuff where they'll attack from the teller's drop or the, or the you know the elevator drop, do things a little bit different because there is no Habana, but not going to be the case, I think, most times on a big basement attack. Interesting six pick off of the Jackal into the Ying. Not going to be expecting the roamers, or so it seems here from Ince. And Clash will also be six picked off of. Defense I do like that. Uh, Clash is an attackers. interesting. Uh, we we've seen her used well in, at times, but most of the time when we see a Clash pick, she's not much of an influence in any round. I wanted to uh, I wanted to note here that this the pulse ban and the way this echo ban are going to play out is going to change the rhythm of that basement. But I mean, you, so without a pulse. What do you think? They'll rely a lot more on the Valkyrie to be able to provide that information because so much of the Locker CCTV defense hinges solely upon a pulse sitting inside a gold, feeding you that intel so you can play around it. And obviously, I think the phrase that I use quite frequently to describe this is that there's a rhythm to the way you play that. But being able to know when to toss your C4 at the right moment due to that pulse, can mean the difference between a down, a kill, or even just simply damaging the hull of the attacking team. I mean, I think there's there's ways to compensate for a lack of pulse, like a Maestro, for example, or a Valkyrie, or a Mira, but they haven't decided to bring the Maestro, just the Valkyrie and the Mira. It's definitely enough if used correctly and if Ints are unable to find the Valkyrie cams, but the cams are not positioned in server right now, so they're not positioned to deny a default push. Nesk has the... Uh, Last cam, though, in hand, and he could potentially put one in server. We'll find out later, I suppose. Either way, 
one of them's already going to be taken out by intact. So that's good efficiency. And uh, yes, this last camera will be placed in a position to try and deny the plant. Hey, he ended up placing it incorrectly. You want it to be on the actual ceiling. That way it's harder to see and it sees more. And he can't pick it up. You can see he's, he's trying. But you, you're pretty sure you, you can't pick it up from that position. So no, I don't think so. Incorrect placement from Nask. Unfortunate. But hopefully for his team, it'll go overlooked by Ince. Yeah, that's a very cheeky cam. I think a lot of people don't realize that that's definitely available. And the more that you see it played, the more that I would imagine it will probably get brought out to the masses. Well, it's kind of useless right now because he placed it wrong. But again, if you put it on the if you put it on the ceiling, then it can see pretty much the whole site. Yeah. So anywho, a bit of a mistake there from Liquid. We'll see if that's going to be a major impediment towards their success on that site, as Ints have taken 90 seconds to get in, and there has been very minimal destruction taken from them. All of the hatches still remain completely reinforced on Ince's side of things and a well-balanced frag grenade all the way down will take no damage whatsoever off of Gohan. Playing very close with that shotgun, he does have a C4 and can possibly go fishing here as he might throw out a line towards the main door of CCTV. SMG in hand to be able to engage quickly at close range. And a, just a bit of a pre-fire there, but will not find any intended target. The frag grenade will go down and it will connect this time. We take a tiny bit of paint off of the fresh new job done on that car. Gohan still getting flashed and just completely under siege here. Look at all this utility being used. That's a good double up as Intact is able to get down with Gohan looking the other way. Nades and flashes and everything to distract there for Gohan. He really had very little chance. He might have been able to take away a kill, but would have been refragged immediately. Overall, though, just about the perfect situation for Ints on that server take. The thing that's not so perfect is their time management. We're coming down to the last 25 seconds here, and Team Liquid still have plenty of C4, plenty of gas canisters to deny the push. But here comes the Ying. That could be all that is necessary. Well-placed Candelas. You're going to see the Bandit, though, take down Drunks. Yuke is able to refrag on the Nesk, and it's just a back and forth here. The C4 and gas canisters being shot, but no, not the second one. And here we go, Liquid with the cleanup. Ints will lose out despite having a good start to that round, and good defense there from Liquid. Overall, super impressed with that one. Very, very impressive with Liquid's bounce back on it, and it just ultimately was, I think, Ince taking way too long. Yeah. It's going to be Teller's office archives for the next defense, and uh, basement defense being successful for the, uh, well, the defense is pretty standard fare. Uh, their utility management was good. Ince's time management, very, very poor. Uh, they had to rush themselves in the end, and you could tell that they weren't attacking in the, the way they really wanted to. Did Paulu really change his name to Paul Lucifer? I think so. <laughs> I mean, it's just a, just a word. Are we, just a word of advice. Do we call him Lucifer now? We call him Paulu. Just a, just a word of advice. The same thing happened with Sen Poppy Geo, who has changed his name. It was Sleepy Geo for a while here. Yeah. We are given a very limited window into what players are what. If you look at the top, you have three characters, okay? Seeing Pilu is at least good enough for us to know that it's hopefully Paulu. Right. But there have been times where players have completely changed their handles and come in and been the same player, and that information has not necessarily been relayed to admins and has not been... Shuttle. Yes. Changing his name to Freedom, which inspired quite a bit of confusion. Yeah. So, for prospective players looking to get into Pro League, we beg of you, please, pretty please, stick to the main head. He changed it back, which I'm very happy about. To be fair, Shuttle changed his name to Freedom for a couple weeks, and people were very openly critical of the handle itself and said that it wasn't... Uh... I like Shuttle. Shuttle's a great name, and that was the other He's thing. the carry Shuttle. Well, I mean, that's it was it was just a good moniker, nonetheless. So, anywho, with Paulu, Paul Lucifer actually is quite clever when you think about it. But at the same time, at first blush, it's very confusing. So. I wasn't sure if I should call him Lucifer. Paul Lucifer. So. This is a great camp from Ness. Yes, it is. He's gonna get some good information here on the terrace, and uh, you can see the Bach unaware could potentially lose his life if uh, Liquid plays this right, or Ness specifically plays this right. We know that Nesk has that infamous aim, but he's going to miss the shot intact. Won't. A clean headshot there for Ents and uh, early lead for the attackers. Especially early. We've only been, we're have only we not even a minute in. Well, just barely. Coming on a minute in. The good information gathered here from Ents as well. They're going to know that they can push into Skylight and meet relatively light resistance if they choose to attack the B bomb site. A bomb has been located. 
All right, so more drone work from Ince here is they need to be better on time management. And you can, like I said a, a couple maps ago, it's totally okay and totally cool for you to take your dear time and try to drone things out. And we won't get anything droned out here on Ince's side of things as both Gohan and Palu are able to take two pretty big entry kills down. The disruption that could be caused by Zofia eliminated and the buck also gone. It's going to be... A significant issue here. This also means that when you look up top and CEO over top of this Teller's Archive site, you're going to have basically one person able to do anything here, and that's going to be the Ash of Uke, who, in terms of his uh, way that he's played, it's probably not going to be tasked with going up to CEO. <laughs> what, what a read from <laughs> Gohan, as that is maximum IQ engaged through the wall, likely with a Valkyrie camera. Uke downstairs eliminates Zig. Bore now entering into lobby himself. Keep in mind there are cams that might still be available to possibly be giving this information over, Michael. So not that strange, though definitely a massive shot from Gohan. Yuke is inside the, the site, but he doesn't have the diffuser. That was Bore who had it, and uh, Paul is going to take him down. Yuke now in a one versus three, and he's in a crossfire. Gohan's going to get him from behind. Liquid, an excellent lockout there on Tellers, and that's two in a row for the defense and for Liquid specifically. So that, uh, that hold overall, a lot of it comes down to poor droning, poor time management, and poor coordination on the side of ints. But uh, time management not as evident there in that round as it was in the previous one. The main thing was the coordination and the droning, uh, uh, or the lack thereof. We saw Ince trying to enter into the building from almost every single possible avenue, uh, usually in teams of one or two, and uh, there was almost nobody droning for anybody else on Ince's side. Because of that, Liquid was able to roam uh, pretty pretty easily and win most of their fights. Even some fights they really shouldn't have. That <laughs> shot through the wall from Gohan was just, I mean, even if it was a camera, still a little bit of luck there uh, for Gohan. And congratulations to, to him for the clean bomb. shot, good game sense, all things considered. Liquid's going to go out to CEO, and they have looked indomitable so far in this match, but it's still early days. Yeah. Um, one thing as well with that is that Gohan's going to be credited with that kill, but that could have entirely come from just somebody else's play and then just an instinctive pre-fire, right? Yeah. It's it's always it's always funny to see people react to those kind of shots, thinking that there's some form of suspicion there, because these players have immense game sense, right? And it's, mm -hmm. it's one of those things where we see quite literally inhuman reactions happening to be able to, you know, maybe just get lucky on a pre-fire. And it's a real, it's literally a shot, you know, a one-time, uh, what am I, what am I looking for here? Shot in the dark? No, uh, chan one chance in a lifetime? I don't know, my brain has stopped working. Once in a lifetime chance. Yes. That one. Once yeah. in a lifetime. Took, took me a second. Once in a lifetime. Yeah. Sometimes the idioms escape me, Michael. Yeah, no, that's okay. So I'm on that I'm on that boat too. Let's turn and focus to round number three here, and a defense of the CEO. So far, Bank did end up being quite a defensive showcase in the Phase versus Red Devils matchup. It might be the same on this time around, especially with Habana being banned. Hard to state the significance of one hard breacher being taken off the table. Interesting setup there from the Evil Eyes on Gohan. He's going to double stack them in CEO, so they're fairly confident the attack is going to come from uh, Skylight, which is. Uh, Still possible for Ince, but it's not guaranteed just yet. It look, looks like they're setting up for, I mean, lobby take possibly. I mean, this is another. This is the problem that Ince had last round. They're all over the place. I am confused with the Finca pick without a shield. Now, a lot of teams that will run this Finca will do so without the access to a shield, sure, but if you're going to be trying to attack CEO, it would make a lot of sense to position somebody on the window, maybe have a shield come through the main lobby, maybe even have a shield try to go through those two CEO panels in the back with a thermite charge and then activate the Finca boost. Yeah. When you look at Liquid's lineup, there's no smoke here. So there really isn't that much of a problem that you have to deal with. Especially with Echo being banned, there's no goo mines. Finca literally has no counters to her ability right now, especially with Ella not being on the board. So all of the main ways to slow it, a Finca down, well, they're gone. Yeah. Well, still no shields to support that. Sig is going to eat some damage from the Ash charge there. That hit the wall. Mirror window still in play though, so a little bit of damage lost, but uh, still easy to hold that position given his utility. Lucifer, Hallucifer, Palu, doing his best to hold on to reception. And he's actually going to heal up Zig, which is great Attack use of that utility. Sexy Cake managing to get a headshot there onto attack using the shotgun. Well done to him from just inside of sight. Looks like it was on the buck who was just below trying to open up holes and get access to that CEO wall. 
Access denied. Well done. Two stacks. So overall, we'll see the second exothermic charge try to go off here as there's a mute jammer that gets set down. And Nesk is going to do some fragging of his own. Drunks with that LMG will tear through Palu and pick up a second. He doesn't have any adrenal surges left and not a ton of life either. He's going to look to rotate out. Yuke is there and you near the R4C. Do some work on the Zig. That will be a repeat of what happened last time around. Nesk picks up another kill. Go on there and Boar will be tasked with finding his kills. He'll start with one on the Nesk. But look at the HP on Boar. And only 20 seconds left to go. You've still got an evil eye. That, left. quite safely, will be able to take him down the moment that he enters a plant position. But it looks like the Thermite is just going to push and go for kills. And the intel being given to Gohan through his evil eye. The gadget doing the work while Gohan's team helps him out. And then it's very easy for him to just be able to train his sights toward the bomb chassis and finish off the Thermite. Liquid right now, as you said, I think you said indomitable, a great way to describe it. That they're perfect through three rounds, similar to what we saw from Red Devils in the last matchup. Well, if Liquid is able to win this next round, they will be in a different wheelhouse, though, because Red Devils only got those three in a round or in a row. And they managed to get five total, but started falling off after the initial three. Now, Ints have seriously struggled in these last few rounds in terms of their coordination, as in they haven't really had any. Um, I'm not really sure what they were thinking there. They were trying to come from the main lobby and the skylight at the same time. Every single time Ints would peek for a kill, there was little to no chance of a refrag. It almost managed to work out. Ints did get, um, I think, a lot of kills over by reception. So that was good work for them being able to put in that flank. But ultimately, the fact that they spread out their forces meant that as soon as Liquid started fighting back, there was little to no chance of Ints winning the round out. Now, Liquid will be going back to the basement, which is the first site they defended since they've been successful on every single site so far. Perfect rotation. Mm -hmm. Not often, actually, that we see those, but so far, we've actually seen every match have one today. Oh yeah, look at that. Immortals did. Uh, Immortals did it on defense, on Aviator Trophy and Kitchen, in order to give their team the victory over on Villa. We saw Nip do it on their defense as well on Oregon with Dorms Laundry and Tower. Red Devils did it to start things off in the Locker CCTV Open Area and CEO. And then we just saw Locker's Teller's CEO from Team Liquid. So four perfect defensive rotations so far today. Yeah, definitely a bit of an odd day. I mean, overall, it's been an odd day. I do, and I would like some statistics on this at some point. Hopefully, we'll be able to get them. Siege GG, if you were listening, would be to possibly get stats on what the defender and attack rates are so far. Because I feel like, looking just very quickly through my notebook, the defense are winning a, pardon the pun, lion's share of rounds more than anything. And that could also be with the retooling of, uh, of the fact that it's six rounds on, on attack and six rounds on defense. And the absence of lion it could be yeah. playing a, a pretty big role. I think the absence of lion is not to be understated because if you think about it, Ubisoft have done a lot of balancing with lion included in their mindset. So like a lot of the... A lot of the ways that uh, the defenders and attackers are set up, it seems as though it was to compensate for Lion's existence, and Lion just doesn't exist anymore in competitive play, so... Anyway, moving on to this match. Halfway through the round so far, and no action just yet. That's typical of a basement hold. Attackers have recovered their Sexy cake downstairs, waiting again as time is hitting the halfway mark. This double jump that has seemed quite common now as he hops in towards the red hat or the red hall and then moves on over. All of Liquid reading into the fact that it is going to be a vault drop. And vault drops can go wrong very fast. If you try to drop without adequate utility or good drone work, well, you get cut down from a number of sites looking that direction. Because there are five members of Liquid still up, you can have one person Not just watch the CCTV server side of things while the remaining four scramble on over. And for Nesk, he's just going to wait very patiently. I would imagine it's likely going to be a smoke drop, asphyxiating bolts to cut off rotates, essentially done by intact Capital. And there you go. Duds will start things with Sexy King and a C4 from Nesk. He'll go fishing and he's going to catch one. It's intact. Nesk through the smoke, taking out drunks. And there's still about just under a minute left as the rest of Ints trying to reposition. Yuk will pick up that diffuser and just head into the bomb site and start to plant over by B. There's an evil eye just sitting watching him. He, he, has, he has a breaching round. There you go. He'll use it. But all the while, stalling for time. 
They'll be vulnerable for seven seconds. Michael, as there can be Nesk pushing in, whether he'll be able to hold the angle, I'm not sure. Duds trying to hold things off. Zig takes out Duds. Nesk gets felled by Boar as the plant goes down successfully, and Ince will try to hold on. They do have a disadvantage in numbers, and Yuka's taken some heavy losses, but Gohan's going to peak a little bit too slowly. Palu doesn't know where anybody is. Information not provided to him, and there's Yuka just running riot now as he'll pick up another kill. Zig finds Boar and will have to take out Yuka. Former teammates, once playing in Latin America side by side, will now have to face off against one another. A great weapon in the R4C waiting as Yuke just holds inside a vault. And Zig will have to go for the defuse. A C4 gets tossed over, but it'll miss as Yuke just dodges through it. He'll have to head on over. Time is not on the side of Zig, but Yuke is gonna miss. Zig comes on out, the timer is too low. Even if he gets the kill, it's all over for Liquid, but it won't be as Ince closes it out with Yuke on a great round. And ultimately, time being the bigger adversary for Liquid, the Vault Drop proving successful, and Ince will break the streak of Liquid taking lockers on attack. This is almost an exact replica of what we saw in the previous match. The only difference being that in the second round, Red Devils defended open area, whereas in the second round here, Liquid defended tellers. But in terms of, uh, uh, other than that, in terms of round count, in terms of who's winning on attack defense and the sides played, it's pretty much the same as FaZe versus Red Devils. So if that trend continues, we will see Team Liquid go back downstairs and they will be successful on their second attempt and looks like yes they'll be downstairs the previous match has spoken they were liquid is going to win this round so <laughs> with the round count being 4-1 already we'll just move on are you going to be uh, you're going to be here a, a soothsayer well no i'm not a soothsayer parker we're talking about the last match here the last match is exactly the same as this one except for one thing well, I mean, they didn't go to open air. Yeah. That's the one thing. But they also weren't the same teams. They also weren't the same lineups. Okay. The fans were different. Stop poking holes in my logic, Parker. You're not allowed to use actual logic. It's against the rules. I'm Maverick. All I do is poke holes and run away. All right. I got that one for you. That one was kind of stretchy. Okay, listen here. I thought that one wasn't that bad. No, I, I, it wasn't that bad. All right, let's take a look at what's happening. The screen currently showing you off the wonderful scoreboard that you can take a look at. And Yuke being on a more traditional fragging role. I think a lot of people have been critical of Yuke's tenure in Pro League. He's actually bounced around from a number of teams. Keep in mind, he played for Immortals last season. Now he's on INTZ. He used to play for the roster of Liquid way back in the day when they were known as BRK, if you recall. He's had quite a tour of duty. A long service medallion being paid to him for the amount of time that he spent in this scene but has always been, I think, overlooked. And as a player, has not been able to have the same success that his other teammates have and is often found as odd man out. So a bit of a return to form for Yuke in this matchup, at least. But this could just be a flash in the pit. Who knows? Well, looks like some rotation holes opened up at the top floor. No actual roamers to use them. Got, uh, we do have roamers, but none upstairs, or so it seems right now from Liquid. Doing their best to delay this round as much as possible, and that's Ooh. an early kill for Nesk. I wish I could have seen that shot. It must have been incredibly clean. A three-speed, very quick shot, headshot there for Nesk. He's going for more, too. You can see him challenging, and wow, I have no idea what Intact was thinking there. Nobody droned out server, and he's simply trying to rush past Nesk? Why? Anyway, giving away his life, and now Ince will be in a seriously bad position. Nesk still roaming upstairs. Drunk's gonna get the first kill for his team, and the second as well, using that sidearm. But that's the second for Nesk also. So we're putting him on low HP, but Drunk's is all the way in sight. And Boar with the diffuser will drop it to Sexy Cake. Again, the second person to try and push into server with no information. It says 20 meters on where that diffuser is for Drunks, but it might as well be a mile away yeah. as he's going to have every member of Liquid knowing his position and having to try to go through it. Just for good measure, he can try and grab hold of any intel. Those Valkyrie cameras will now be given to Ince, and that could actually be a major boon in allowing him to get this diffuser. Just narrowly missing the outline there of one member of Liquid. As you can see, all of Team Liquid have coalesced around this diffuser knowing that it's incumbent upon Drunks to be able to grab it. His advance will be choked off by a toxic canister, and while the legs of the Dokabi are spotted by Palu, he's gonna fall off. 
That Carbide does great damage, but a headshot is obviously your priority here. The Strongest is just going to continue to eat shots through that hatch. Zero control and not really much opportunity, as this is going to be a fool's errand for Drunks to try and work his way through. The caliber destruction on the stopped wall that he created earlier on will now work against him as he hugs the wall, looking to possibly take one person down in the process, but he's not going to get it. A great round from Nesk, all started off by that beautiful shot, that entry up top of Skylight. Liquid will shut the door, and Michael, you are a soothsayer as things go according to plan, given the previous match, and it's four to one for Liquid. So now we know what the Buck was thinking. Now we know what Intact was thinking in that round, and Boar as well, rushing into server, having not droned it out, and dying very easily to Sexy Cake. Um, they were thinking, hey, Trunk is in sight. We need to get in sight and plant the diffuser. The problem is that they, they were trying to go into sight through a different avenue, one that was not cleared out. So if, bear with me here, we had seen in, instead of rushing into the unknown, simply rotated and tried to take up the lane that Drunks had used, we might have seen a different outcome. That is a big if, though. And also, important, it uh, looks like we will be seeing a rehost as this is uh, still just into the prep phase. So, waiting on admin call. Waiting on admin call, which is, I think, uh, given recent history, the correct course of action, but it looks like it has been made. Yeah, as another member of Liquid will disconnect here and we will see it likely come back to us <laughs> with a 4-1 scoreline. So in that last round, uh, the the reason I can, you, know, you can forgive them for not trying to take the avenue that Drunks took is that Big is a really big map. It would have taken a lot of time, and Drunks probably would have died in the transition for the rest of the attacking team. Still, though, Ince made a mistake in that round trying to overcommit to Drunks' position. Might have been prudent to simply instead have Drunks try to flank his opponents while the rest commit to a standard take into the server. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit of a gamble there for Nesk to play that aggressively too, though. You're not usually expecting somebody to contest the Skylight Stairwell that early on, especially on an entry when you likely have somebody droning you in. Mm -hmm. But Nesk had to rotate into the admin office down by open area and could have pushed in at any point. And that's exactly what he did. And he was able to get what I would imagine was a pretty miraculous shot between those two marble banisters on the railing just surrounding that skylight stairwell. I oh, wholeheartedly agree with you there, Parker. I mean, it was impressive and we didn't even get to see it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even after Nesk's position was given away, uh, the rest of Ince did not address him directly. They tried to take the fight one other time on his position in archives, and they lost that as well. But there was no like concerted effort. Hey, let's drone him out and clear him as a team. And that was what really, I think, really was the problem for Ince. Yeah. Also, I have to be a little bit critical of the lineup that Ince is bringing along with them, too. I like that they're realizing that roam clearing is a problem for Ince. And obviously, is a difficulty on bank due in large part to the size of the map. It's huge. And of course, requires tools to be able to assist you with just your typical 10 drones. That's why you bring a Dokkabi. That's why you bring a Jackal. Mm -hmm. And I've been a little perplexed, actually, with the lineup that we've seen being trotted out here, because you could even sacrifice the Ash and just bring a Jackal in its place. Still have lots of killing potential with that C7E. Obviously, Jackal is not the same operator as Ash, but you have the ability to pin down one member of the defense. I think the bigger problem is, is not so much even the Jackal's utility is missing, is that the first step, finding somebody of Liquid, has eluded Ints for most of those rounds because they're not doing great work on their preliminary entry, and that's the bigger issue. Yeah, it's eluded them because they're skipping it. Yes. Uh, it's, 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 it's not, you know, some crazy thing that's hard to do. It's standard fare, standard steps for every roam clear. I mean, every attack round, ever. I mean, even on, okay, we've talked about this before. Even on a map like Clubhouse, where you're, and they're defending the basement, you expect everyone to be downstairs, all five players. That is... Typical. You still need to drone everything out because if you don't, you're probably going to lose the round to some random person sitting in cash room or by Adam's spot or something crazy like that. I mean, it's not uncommon. Now, that is Ince being a little bit negligent, but they're almost done with their first half. Going into the second half, when you're on defense, it's not something you have to think about. You have to think about how you're going to set yourself up and how you're going to counter what your enemy's going to be throwing at you. So, it might just be a problem for now, and if Ince can salvage one more round out of this first half, 
there's still a lot of potential for INS to bring this back. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what INS had in mind as well, banning the pulse out. So obviously when you ban a defensive operator, you're presuming that this team has built a strategy that doesn't involve that. Now, for Liquid, they have done a masterful job, I would say, of recovering without a pulse playing inside of gold. You know, you've had Zig has played pulse on a number of maps and being able to work as a support player because your pulse is not typically going to be a fragging operator on bank. You need him for his utility more than you need him for anything else. This differs on certain maps where you can stick a pulse all off on his lonesome. He'll basically be able to drone himself and possibly capitalize on a couple kills. I'm thinking of Villa, for example, as a map where pulse is usually inclined to get more kills than not. Bank, obviously very different, similar to the way that you'd use a pulse on Oregon downstairs in that laundry cubby to control the stairs leading down into the site. Without a pulse being on the board for INS, I'm very curious to know their strategy to make their defenses work. And I would imagine that it's probably going to hinge upon having a Valkyrie or a Maestro, very similar to what we're seeing from Liquid's defense. I mean, it reminds me a lot of what we were seeing in the previous match phase with Red Devils. A lot of this reminds me of the previous match, but it was the same thing there where Red Devils banned out Smoke, and they had a whole defensive strategy kind of relying on other things, other tools that they brought. They knew what they were getting themselves into, and I expect Inst to have something similar up in mind. We're going to get into the match, though. We've got everything ready, so we can actually get the action underway. And uh, it will carry on from where we left off, because, of course, the disconnect was in the first 15 seconds of that prep phase. Teller's office archives as the defense here for Liquid. So we're starting our second circle here, for, but they won't be able to complete it because this is the last round of the first half. So the instead of going back up to CFE, the CEO, they're they instead going to go to Tellers, as you mentioned. And the overall operator selection here from Liquid, pretty sound. It looks like they are going to be roaming heavily upstairs. That makes a lot of sense considering they've brought the mute. On Insta's side, is that an interesting kit? Again, the Finca being brought. Look at the lineup, though, from Ints. You've, yeah. got, you've got three flashes on Ash. You've got the two concussive blasts from Sophia. You've got four frags on the Finca and yeah. the Buck. And then you take a look to the right at Liquid's lineup, and what's absent? A Jaeger. That's a good point. Not having that Jaeger is going to seriously hurt, and we've been seeing the absence of Jaeger quite a lot recently, despite him not being banned, uh, in moments where he could be incredibly useful. So a different mentality here from the defensive teams as of late, and that is definitely a tricky one, and uh, you expect it to work against the defenders. It has been a factor, but not the most important thing, I think, to take away from a lot of the rounds where he's absent. I'm not sure. I mean, it's, it's weird, but it... It hasn't exactly been too much of a hindrance. The lack of Jaeger, that is. Well, we'll see how it plays out in this round. Liquid are going to be setting up their standard mirror window, facing into Tellers. That makes sense, because Tellers is one of the easier sites to uh, get control of as the attacking team, when you compare it to Archives. I mean, it really depends on how you set yourself up as an attacking team. If you're going to take Top 4, for example, Archives is really easy to cl clear it into, especially if you're pushing from Skylight. There's a nice Valkyrie cam there in the open area see index and we'll be calling out a lot of good information for Liquid. So even though the site is Teller's Archives, we are seeing essentially a CEO defense up top, especially yep. being anchored off by this mirror window that Zig has set up above. If you lose control of that second floor, that's a problem. Now, with Ints, when they were attacking the Teller's Archives previously, one of the first casualties on their side of things was the buck. And of course, we commented on the time about how that means that the ability for Ints to take map control away up top of CEO and make attacker. the lives miserable for the team below was essentially gone and putting it all in Yuke's hands who ended up sprinting into the site and getting a kill but then dying himself to that beautiful play by Gohan through the wall. I would suspect now that given this mirror strategy upstairs, Ints will stall out a little bit longer and have some difficulty trying to take care of the play from above. It will also necessitate a drop back from Liquid when they feel that they have done a sufficient time of killing time on the clock. That's playing at CEO is in a good position, a little bit exposed. If it's drones before they clear into CEO, they could very well get an easy kill here on Tenesk, but they've been incapable of that so far. Bor, here we go. We'll call out Nesk's position, but that is just going to prompt Nesk to relocate. Good relocation. He will be in the hallway. It looks like he's been spotted out. And again, another rotation. Nesk, with the excellent game sense of where of when he's exposed and finding a new angle, is going to continue to delay Ints as they come down to the last 40 seconds. 
played the long angle as Duds there, and he's going to have an ACOG of his own to go against, which is going to be Palu playing on the Maestro, who's now walked back in towards Banana. He's going to rotate back out and play a little bit of give and go here as Nesk starts off the festivities, eliminating Yuke and slowing down that three speed. Has a great hole through the floor. Still, Ints have really struggled to be able to take control of this second floor, and they're going to have to rotate now in towards the bottom. <laughs> Zig is going to feast upon Intact, Sexy Cake, and Zig will pick up more, and Gohan softening up a corpse, but it's Drunk's last left, who sprints in as a last-ditch effort, and an inability from Ints to take that second floor away from Liquid will be their downfall, and then the clock striking midnight on them. It'll be a 5-1 score heading into that second half with Liquid in a commanding lead to be able to close this out. Did you see Intact just walk by Zig? No information on Ince's side. I mean, part of it is the mute. Part of it is the fact that Liquid is excellent at hitting those drones and denying information and keeping a line of guns to shoot the drones before they can actually get what information is necessary. But still... Ince is operating with little to no information because they're spreading themselves too thin. They need to focus their intentions on one thing in particular, and that needs to be clear from the get-go, from the start of the round. Hey, leave your drones here. This is where we're entering. Hey, this is where we're going to need to uh, get information on next. We're going to attack tellers. We need to know if somebody's playing by cash bag. And here's the thing. Aside from the, just the drones and the lack of drones, cash bags is a default anchor position. You should know somebody's there. You really... Intact should not have walked by Zig there, is the point I'm trying to get at, whether or not he knew somebody was playing that position. I think that a good metric as well to apply to teams is the way that they try to transition in towards a plan and get that execute off successfully. For Ince, through those six rounds, they only got Diffuser down once. Unless my numbers are wrong, I've been keeping track myself. Sometimes I am apt to forget. But it looks like Ince got the Diffuser down once, and that was the vault drop that they ended up winning when it came down to the Zig Yuke 1v1, in which yeah. Zig just simply ran out of time and then ended up dying. The fact that the Ints haven't even been able to get a Diffuser down, I think, really speaks to the weakness behind their strategy because Liquid is boxing them out. Ints isn't in a position to be able to get the plan down because they're not getting close enough towards the site. That speaks to their droning issues and that also speaks to their ability to manage the clock as they've done so quite poorly so far. Yeah, and they're just not working together at all either. I mean, if you... If you a good way to compensate for not having enough information is to work together as a team, as a unit, and put yourselves in positions to refrag each other. But that's not the case here, friends. But it shouldn't be the most important thing as they move to defense. This is their last chance. If they win this round, then they keep alive, and they're going to have to win <laughs> all subsequent rounds to get a win here. But if they lose even one... It's going to be match point and a guaranteed draw at the very least for Team Liquid. So, tricky spot here for Ince. And by the way, when you guys, we, we critique Ince for having poor information gathering. If you want to know what good information gathering looks like, that, that was it right there. Attackers that drone the in the server. middle of server that is clearly calling out Ince and intact specifically inside of server. You will get the first kill though. Attackers and that's the sole hard breacher of Liquid. That is a possible fatal blow already with a minute and 40 left in this round. Yeah. Intact is going to guard, and oh, what a shot from Intact, followed up by a good one from Duds on Nepali. Phone will ring away, and Intact will stop the push through that dirt tunnel and turn off the phone. That gadget will be quieted, leaving Sexy Cake and Gohan to have to shoulder the rest of the weight here. And of course, Liquid made difficult by the fact that they lost their Heart Breacher, but then I think got a bit too bold and just assumed that, oh, maybe if we push in, that'll pay dividends. Let's Trying to assist Gohan's push, as you can hear the F2 rattling off downtown in the dirt tunnel. It's going to be a logic bomb, so all five members of Ince will at least have their position notified. Sexy Cake trying to make a play, but he's got the Legion Traps two in a row to disrupt this push. It's not going to be an easy one. Gohan is just about to be peaked, but he doesn't know it. Gas canister will keep him stuck in Dirt Tunnel, and as Sexy Kate gets eliminated, it's all down to Gohan in the one versus five. He will be eating away at that gas canister one little breath at a time. You will finish him off, and Ince take their second round in this match. So good information gathering from Liquid, but overall the strategy, not fantastic. Trying to push into server there, I mean, it just got halted by the smoke. And how are you going to pull off a server push when you know that there's smokes and C4s on the board? 
and you don't have a thermite to open up any of those walls, nor a hatch either. You also don't have a, I mean, you don't have glass, you don't have a, a shield, there's or nothing. Or a maverick. Or a maverick. There's nothing, there's a lot of tools missing from liquid that would be very useful when attacking the basement. Here's another really interesting thing. Now they're bringing a maverick, and it cannot be the basement. Maverick is useful on a lot of these sites, sure, but he is most useful on the basement. Okay, good. It's a six pick. Spoke too soon there. Good job for Liquid uh, realizing they don't really need the Maverick. Not really, unless they're attacking the basement. Attackers need to Overall, their kit, though, spawn. pretty solid. Got a nice spread of soft destruction. The Ash and the Zofia. Got the hard destruction from the Thermite. Hopefully, they don't lose him early on this time. <laughs> Got the Roam clear on the Jackal, and Gohan is ever proficient on Twitch. So, he will very likely be able to get those mirror windows. We'll see. We'll see. Mirror windows on this side in particular, so important. And, yeah. Gonna be on Gohan's shoulders for that. Go on, Gohan. Go, Gohan. With this reinforced panel up top, I had double reinforcement there. All right, they're probably gonna put an evil eye on the other side of this. I was going to ask if Inz was possibly going to risk the Maestro engaging in a long range fight all the way over on the parking garage, but that would mean that Liquid could have possibly had a glass at their disposal, but no, that's not gonna obviously be the case. Alibi is interesting. Alibi is interesting. We've seen ninjas in pajamas run Alibi on this map a couple times. Mm -hmm. And I actually think they, a couple teams have banned her once or twice on this map against Nip too. If I remember correctly at the Paris Major, it was Nip using an Alibi strat against Fnatic on Bank in particular. Basically just designed to try and keep you guessing as to the location. Obviously with Alibi you want to run a default skin as well because that's uh, it's pay to lose if you really run any other skins on her. So I mean you can. It's just, it's just going to cost you like a couple milliseconds of reaction on most people. Might be all that matters. Yeah, which is usually, at this level of play, all that matters. So, Absolutely. yeah, you want to run that default. So, overall, setup from both teams, kind of interesting. Lucifer. Pa Lucifer. Pa Lu. Going to be pushing into the top of the skylight. You can see he's got good control here. That storage room door, which is always up really heated area of the map when defending this top floor. Dutch just waiting for his opportunity to hold down that trigger. It's going to be actually, it looks like a slow peek there from Palu. He's just inching his way to the door. Probably just trying to hold down the flank. Doesn't want to give himself uh, away as a free kill. And uh, you're going to see the Jaeger actually fall all the way down to the basement through that three-way rotation. C4 from Boar is going to miss its mark, and he will rotate into storage attempt to hold the position his Jaeger abandoned. It's going to get really tough for Inns here now, depending on how they are able to evacuate the site. As Gohan has complete possession with that little drone of his as it'll zip-zap around. Those alibi decoys actually working out quite well, but despite the marks, Palu will get the very first frag. It's the Jackal. Both Duds as well as Boar will try to creep in towards the site, but I think it's safe to say that Inns has lost Complete control. Diffuser going down, and there's Zig to take out Yuke, with two members of Ince below. Having to try and pop back up through the skylight stairwell, Duds will miss most of his shots, a hard angle to hit, especially when going against an Ash with an ACOG. Drunk's just on sight, will try and hold down the fort, but the Diffuser will hit the halfway mark. And now it's going to be Boar up next, trying to get past next. Nesk, not an easy task. Low magazine and the Vector in his hands as he creeps all the way up, but oh, it's Nesk shutting the door and leaving no opportunity for a retake there. Gohan, just a bit of a formality with that diffuser hitting the danger mark. will finally grab Drunks, and Liquid will move to match point on bank. Now, considering how dominant that round win was for Team Liquid, you might be asking yourself, where was the backbone of the defense for Ince? Well, I'll tell you, it was Dudson Boar downstairs on a deep long flank, taking way too much time to commit to the retake. And another really tricky thing about that is if you're going to be going for a flank onto the skylight, you're probably going to not see success. I mean, the reason nobody does that is that the only way to get up is through the stairs that are being watched while people are looking into sight. So the flank watch doesn't even need to be a dedicated flank watch. In this case, it was Nesk. He can be looking into sight and covering for his teammates while simultaneously watching the flank. It, there's no necessary, there, there's no dedicated flank watch necessary, which is why, yeah, it's a very efficient sight take for that reason, and also one of the reasons why you don't want to be going for the flank very often. There are some ways to make it work, certainly. Like C4 from below, 
Uh, all that sky, uh, that skylight area, the little, little square, is uh, destructible from below. But Boar used his C4. He didn't have that as an option. So both he and Duds, basically non-factors in that round because they went for a deep flank way too late. I think a part of that was them falling off, though, right? Going through the hatch that was inside of Janitor Well, right that's now. what I'm and, getting at, yeah. And, I mean, that was... And, Ten seconds left. It's tough, because, I mean, think about it if that worked. We would be praising them, because they did fall off Five seconds and scramble effectively, insertion. but... The odds were so against them, though. Absolutely. I mean, from the get-go. If it had worked, it would have been a miracle. And, yeah, well, I, I probably would have been saying, wow, fantastic job for them, but I also probably would have been saying, lucky them. Palu, a... Free kill on to drunks. As Hello. He... Oh my gosh. And so as as uh, so drunks attempted to run out from the uh, terrace. Not smart. No, not smart. Not that's, smart. That's how we can describe that. We'll leave it at that. We'll just move on. It I understand you've got your back to the wall and you're presuming that Liquid is probably going to win, and you might as well take a chance. Fair. But. I personally don't think that it's not not that peak, not on bank. Yeah, I mean that's what that is 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 uh, drunks relying on Team Liquid for getting their basics, and drunks did. I mean, Palu did not forget his his basics. So, Yuke's gonna get a refrag though. There goes Palu. So, it's it seems to be go everywhere mode engaged at the moment for Inses. They are just hey will play unpredictably. It's the same thing they did on attack. Yeah. Just go everywhere and hope that you win all your fights. And I mean, you lost a Jackal. Not bad. Those are your smokes down for Liquid. Okay. Which means that you now can't shroud the site in smoke. You can't cut it off. You'll have to just simply kill instead. You can't silent drop anymore. Correct. Well, I mean, I don't think that's enough to silent drop anyway. I think, no, you used to be able, you used to, be able to do that on the tellers. And I think he tried to just now. Well, I'm not sure. Well, whatever. Boar is going to get a kill on to Gohan. There you go. That's the Twitch gone as well. Sex Kick gonna do some damage, but not get the kill onto the mute. And oh no, the murder hole there. Set up for the main stairs. That's good situational awareness for Ince to uh, force Sex Kick to fall back. Actually surprised here that Nesk didn't decide to push up towards Elevator. I know that the door is reinforced. You can see the Jaeger has moved up of Duds, so it possibly could have been a really bad idea, but Nesk is just gonna survive this encounter very, very luckily. The Valkyrie is completely contained and will push in. And what are you doing? Well, he was flashed anyway. He was bound to die, but... Right, but going on your cam when you know you're getting pushed, that is not advisable. I'm not exactly certain what Yuke was thinking in that instance, as Intact is now going to try to stave off this push, throw out a Nitro Cell, and it will do uh, really not all that much. Boar is there, though, as Nesk trades him off, and this round looks like it's going to come to a pretty close screaming conclusion. But Ince is going to battle back, and Sexy Cake with just a tiny bit of HP is going to be the only person on his team that is going to have an opportunity to do this. He's got a brand new, newly designed face shield in front of him. Sprints in, but doesn't have the diffuser and those Valkyrie cameras, as well as uh, possibly anything else. We'll be able to provide some information for Inns. 15 seconds left. You'll hear the timer yourself as more marks are coming out, and Duds is just going to sit and wait and hope that remaining. none of those bullets get penetrated through the thin cubicle walls. This is a almost impossible Five task for Sexy go. Cake. And he just turns to the side, and Boar will finish him off and end his misery. And that aggression looked like it was going to absolutely cripple Ints through the stretch here, but Yuke ended up saving that round with a very quick kill onto the Jackal, and I don't think Liquid knew what to do after that, losing their smokes, and then they ultimately lost the plot inside a lobby. You know, the really confusing thing to me is that I thought that it was actually going to be a comeback there, and Esk was doing a whole lot of work for his team, but... The uh, ultimate problem there was that while Nesk was doing a bunch of work, Sexy Cake wasn't. He was a non-factor in the round, and he got forced back in Tellers. He could have helped his teammate Nesk quite a lot that uh, right there. If he had pushed at the same time, I feel like that could have ended up being a recovery, but it wasn't. And I agree with you. I think the aggression from Ince working out for them, though, again, I would say that that's a little bit of luck that that worked out because again, it's the strategy of, hey, let's spread ourselves out as much as possible and hope we win our fights. If you lose those fights, then you lose the round. So good job to Ince establishing that early man advantage uh, after losing somebody early on and managing to lock out the round in the end. Team Liquid going to be now attacking on two Ince's defense of the basement, somewhere where Ince was previously successful. Bomb located by the, definitely, the I think, the best site we saw from Ince. Best round we saw from Ince overall, as the Team Liquid tried some strategies that were ill-advisable. The way that they tried to attack server was also kind of just not really sure what they were 
planning there, pushing in through the dirt tunnel and just about nothing else. All right, so Inns fighting for a draw as best as they can, Michael. Liquid will need to make sure that they don't just walk in all haphazardly and realize that they still have a match to play here as Liquid tries to keep pace with the top two teams. The standings will be shown at the conclusion of this matchup, but Liquid's role in the standings is that of uh, the potential uh, spoiler to the main two teams in both Nip and Immortals, with FaZe getting a victory today and likely will continue to pick up more victories given their recent success outside of the last two matches prior to that. So, with how top-heavy Latin America tends to be, Liquid cannot afford to leave points on the table, especially to Ints, who are the worst team statistically right now, and the bottom place team in the league. Definitely something worth considering as Liquid starts go. opening up these drop-downs. They've... Ooh, that's... That's too quick. Yeah, a little bit of uh, inefficiency there from the Maverick, and it actually really does matter. Uh, if you waste too much, then you will not be able to open up uh, the drop down. You got to be really careful. He will, he, he will very easily, I'm sure, be able to open up the drop down. But he's not going to be able to open up many holes in the second one, which you know can be very useful. You can hear the jackal ping as well go through again, but I think the defender is sitting behind a reinforcement. It's very difficult to tell from this angle if what appears to be, it looks like it might actually be Duds' Jaeger that's there. Sexy Cake, I think a little bit overthinking this. Not if he's intending, I don't know if he's I intending think... to open it up or maybe even catch somebody underneath it. Remember how we saw Mav from FaZe sitting there? True, I, true. I think he's just being cautious, though, to be honest. So we will eventually get it open, there you go. Inefficient amount of that gas, though, reaching torch and oh, Yuke! What a clean shot. That's a beautiful one, and the whole time it was on <laughs> camera! How was this not called out? They could have countered his play. Oh my goodness, they had a camera up there the whole time. Lucifer, I mean, Lucifer's gonna get the second kill for his team, and uh, it's in a tricky spot now on match point. How is nobody watching that? Unless they were, but Paulu's just going to push right in, and Ince seemingly lost now as three members of the team are gone. And you've got your anchors from Ince still available. Great cam up top. If only that had been there when they were trying to get the hatch. Oh, wait. It was. Four pushing up. He has a nitro cell, but he gets spotted by Gohan sitting in the middle of the site. And Sexy Cake will end the suffering of Ince, who did not look particularly keen to try to win that round with some of the plays that were made. Not sure if they were just hoping to get really aggressive and have Liquid get caught off guard, similar to what we saw on the previous defense of Ince. Not entirely certain, but Liquid will earn that one. Yeah, in Ince weren't in that last round. They weren't, they, weren't, they weren't present. Not as much as they needed to be. No. And uh, it was a very solid round from Liquid, Sexy Cake. Oh, uh, was very cautious on the drop down. He might not have been able to, I mean, get shot, to be honest, because considering how cautious he was being, yeah. uh, he also managed to do a lot of work from those drop downs. He got two kills, if I'm not mistaken, just through the drops. So impressive play for him individually uh, and overall for Liquid.